God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church, and I'm the pastor of the church, Bishop Ramon Di Maria. And I thank you for tuning in on Ustream.tv, YouTube.com. And you can also listen to this message on the audio portion at PirateRadio.com under Abundant Grace Church. God bless you, and thank you for being with us today. The title of our message today is Jesus Christ, the Great Mediator. I'll be coming from 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5, which reads as follows from the King James Version. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the Lord Christ Jesus. And from the Good News Bible, it reads, For there is one God, and there is one who brings God and human beings together, the man Christ Jesus. Now, the writer of this letter was Paul the Apostle. He wrote about A.D. 62 from Rome. And if you know he wrote it from Rome, then you know he was in prison. And the theme of this letter is how to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of of the truth. Now, beloved, no man, no woman, no one can read the Holy Scriptures without seeing that great prominence is given to Christ Jesus in the plan of salvation. When you read the Scriptures, Jesus Christ is revealed. He's revealed in the Old Testament and he is revealed in the New Testament. Now, this morning I will open up with 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 2, which reads as follows from the King James Version, For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And a good news Bible renders it. For while I was with you, I made up my mind to forget everything except Jesus Christ and especially his death on the cross. So, the only definite thing that I made it my business to know, Paul saying, was how Jesus Christ, the person, and him crucified, his office, that's all Paul wanted to know about Jesus Christ. And we should desire to know more about Jesus Christ. It isn't just reading, but we need to have an intimate relationship with Christ. We need to form a relationship that we know that, how can I put it, we could have an understanding. We need to know that we can have the mind of Christ, that we can know what he is thinking. Because if you do not dwell in the Word of God, you won't know what's in the mind of Jesus Christ. If you don't read the words in red, you won't know what is in the mind of Jesus Christ. We are to draw closer to Christ and not distance ourselves from Him. We are to know the person of Christ and His office, which constitute, beloved, The gospel. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. Who he is. Mm -hmm. And what he did. And what we have. Through him. Amen. Now, as far as speaking on, for I determined not to know anything among you. This is a resolution. For the Apostle Paul. He's saying, I resolve not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ. Paul wanted to know everything that he could about Christ. He wanted to know his thoughts. He wanted to know every word that he spoke. He wanted to draw close to Jesus Christ. And we should be no different as Christians. 
We should want to draw close to Christ. We should want to know more about Christ. We should want to have a better understanding of Christ and why he did what he did on Calvary. Why he left us his word. Why he speaks to us every day. Why he intercedes for us every day. Why he mediates for us every day. He is constantly mediating for us to the Father. He is the go-between. If you remove Christ out of the equation, you have nothing. You have no relationship with God. If Christ isn't the primary source of your mediation. God says, Paul says, For I determined not to know anything among you, save Christ and Him crucified. See, he had a spiritual and experiential knowledge of Christ himself. As we talked about the other day, Paul says he got caught up into the third heaven. But before that, he had a relationship. He had a conversation with Christ on the road to Damascus. When the Lord spoke to him and says, Paul, Paul, why persecuted thou me? Say, who art thou, Lord? See, Paul had an immediate response. Now, if it's like us, sometimes God speaks to us, but we don't pay attention. We always want a second and third opinion. Well, Paul answered right back. How many remember when Samuel, as a youth, heard a voice, and, it, right, and he thought it was Eli, the priest, calling him. Then after like about three times, and he called, Eli realized. Now, think about this, Eli realized. So what does that tell you about Eli's relationship with God? Also, it was at a distance. Why? Because he allowed sin in his house. He allowed his sons mm -hmm. to have all kind of immoral relationships with women that came into the temple. And he didn't discipline them. So even Samuel, after three times went by, then he said, then he realized, oh, it must be God. He told Samuel to answer him. <laughs> you see? To talk to God. Because he knew God was going to talk to him. A lot of times, the same thing happens to us. God is speaking, but we want all this kind of proof that it's God. Hey, what do you think about, hey, what do you think about, hey, what do you think about this? I believe God told me, what do you think? We're asking everybody but God. We're seeking everybody's opinion, but God's opinion. Instead of taking out the Word of God and reading and studying the Word of God, going, in, in, going into prayer, asking God for, for answers, we go to everybody else. Well, we have a direct line to the throne room of God through Jesus Christ. Paul wanted to know Nothing but Jesus Christ and his crucifixion. Now, I don't have time to elaborate on everything today. But he wanted to know the person of Christ. Now, when we want to know somebody as humans, what do we do? Okay, let's take this as a, a three-step measure. Let's say that because we're male and female here today. At one time we were young. And we might have seen someone of the opposite sex. A female, or if you're female, a male, correct? And certain things about that person, the, the, the outer view of the person, or maybe with their hair or their dress, and it, it attracted you, right? So you, you wanted to get to know that person because there was a physical attraction first. 
That is, as you got to speak to the person, you wanted to know how to, about that person, how that person thinks, uh, what kind of life they have, where they work, the whole nine yards. And then after you started communing with that person, communicating with that person, then the thoughts came that this may be the person that you want to spend your life with, the rest of your life. I said the rest of your life. So if you're a man, you want to spend the rest of your life with a woman. If you're a woman, you want to spend the rest of your life with a man. So you, you get right. I should say husband. Correct. But you wanted to come into a permanent relationship with that person. So you propose marriage. The person accepts. Then you make plans to come together for life. So you plan everything, and then the wedding day comes. You say your vows. You make a commitment to one another. Then you get married for eternity. And what until death do you part? And if one dies, then you have the right to marry. And that's the only way in the Lord. So, this is the way our relationship should be with Christ. We get to know Him. We get to experience His love, His kindness, His mercy, His wisdom, knowledge, understanding. We get to know Him more and more. We accept Him. We form a, a contract like we do in, in marriage, engagement. We come together. But the finality of every of our relationship with Christ takes place when we are in His presence. When we come together with Him. When we go to what? The wedding feast. When we go to, to the marriage of the Lamb. That summarizes our relationship with Jesus Christ. But until then, we want to know Him more. We want to have fellowship with Him. We want to what? Dine with Him. We want to spend our time with Him. We want to commune with Him. This is what we're talking about here. To get to know Jesus Christ in a more powerful way. And you can't do that unless you are alone with Him. Unless you spend time with Him. Let me tell you this. You can have all the prayer meetings. You can go to church. You can go to service and everything. But you need your time alone with Christ. You need your prayer time. You need to be with Him. You need to feast upon Him. You need to receive from Him. You need to pray for Him to intercede in your life. To remove the things that are not good for you. You need communion with Jesus Christ. Without communion with Jesus Christ, you cannot have communication or any kind of communion with God the Father. Because Jesus said, the only way to Father is through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am said Jesus Christ. Amen. So we need to understand that. We need a proper relationship with Jesus Christ. Not only when we talk about Jesus Christ and Him crucified, let me say this. Crucifixion was the greatest offense that a person could ever indulge in. They crucified criminals. Did they not? Salvation only comes through Jesus being put down, through him being demeanored, through his death on the cross. What the devil looked at as his victory over Christ, it was his demise. When people come against the cross of Jesus Christ, guess what? They're coming against themselves. They are joining hands with the power of darkness when they come against the Christ. The Christ of the Bible. When they come against the Christ, the anointed one, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, they are coming against their own, let's put this, their very own soul. 
they are pronouncing damnation on their soul when they come against the cross of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ had to become sin. He had to take the sin of the world, the sin of all mankind upon himself on that cross. He had to be that living sacrifice. He became the living sacrifice. He gave us total person that we may have the ability to approach the Father and be forgiven. There was glory that day on the cross because it brought about a door being opened that was closed. It brought about where the veil in the temple was torn apart. Where we could enter in to the Holy of Holies. When you think about it, Think about what the cross did. Think about the glory on, on the cross. You know, we have the song, The Old Rugged Cross. It's an emblem of suffering and pain. But Jesus did it for mankind's sake. He became God's sacrificial lamb that opened the doors for all of us as sinners to enter in to eternal life. So, let me read our main verse. That's where we're going to go. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. Let me read it again from both the King James Version and the Good News Bible. It says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. That's the King James. Got a good news Bible where it says, For there is one God, and there is one who brings God and human beings together. The man, Christ Jesus. He is the one that has redeemed us back mm -hmm. to the Father. Mm -hmm. So, let's look at Christ, our mediator. I'm going to give you several points, okay? And I'll give you a, a number for each point. Incidentally, there will be ten points I'm going to bring to you. They're not real long points, but I'm going to bring them to you. Point number one, be governed. Jesus Christ is the first and the last. He was the first to give himself and he'll be the last. There will be no one else. Of course, in the Greek, it's the Alpha and the Omega. Peter says he is the author and finisher of our faith, right? He says that he is the bishop of our souls. He's the head of the church. He is the bright morning star. He is all these things. That's point one. So look at our mediator. He is the beginning and the end. There is no other. Okay? He is the author and finisher. He originated it. Why? How? Because he is the Word of God that became flesh. He is the bishop of our soul. That means he is the overseer of our soul. He is the shepherd of our souls. He's the head of the church. He is the head, we are the body. 
He's the bright and morning star. He's the one that you look to. He is the brightness of God. He's the brightness of all creation. And through him, everything is made new. He is there when your day starts. He is there at daybreak. You can see the bright morning star at daybreak. So why should you not seek him first at the beginning of your day? He is the one that will shine for you. He is the one that will take you through the day. He is the one that will bring people to you. He is the one that will fight your enemies for you. He is the one that will never leave you more when he forsake you. Point two. In the Old Testament, Jesus is the wonderful counselor. The Messiah. The Lord of hosts. In the New Testament, his personal name is Jesus, or Savior. That's in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, in case you want to look at it. But his official name is Christ, or the Anointed. Now, he is also called Emmanuel, which is God with us. Point three. He is a mediator. So what is a mediator? So we say, well, what's a mediator? Well, a mediator is one that comes between parties who are at variance, who are, are at odds with one another in order to reconcile them. So I used to work on contract negotiations. And when we couldn't come to a solution, we had to call the mediator in, right? And you know, he's like the mediator would sit between here hear our complaints about this or that or that or that. And then we as a group would go back to the table and the company would go back to their table and they work things out and then we come together again with the media and say, this is what is offered here, this is what is here, this is what they said. You know, they would come together to try to form some agreement where we can get things back on track again. Well. This is what the mediator does. And where there is no opposition, there cannot be any mediation, right? So you have to have opposition. Okay, let's talk about boxing. Got two boxers, who, who do you have in the middle? Referee. <laughs> he brings them together, they touch their gloves right, they go ahead and they go and duke it out every round. 12 rounds or 50, whatever that is. Championship fight, but he is he is in the middle to make sure that things are done right on both sides. If not, one loses a point, one loses, one gets a foul. See, that's the way it is. In football, you have a a line judge, right? You get a backfield judge. You, you have these here to to make sure that 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 the game is balanced. And this is what the mediator does. He is doing that. So we have to understand that Christ performs a task every day in the, in the uh, life of a Christian. Every day. He is interceding. Whenever we say, forgive me my sins, Christ goes right to the Father to bring us back in our proper relationship. He intercedes for us. He's our mediator. But his main mediation took place when we got on our hands and knees or however we did it and we came to acknowledge Christ as our Savior and Lord. That brought us peace with God the Father. When he died on the cross, he died, his death, gave him the right to be our mediator. And he is our mediator for the rest of our lives. That's why we need to, on a consistent basis, go to the Father through Jesus Christ. We need Jesus Christ to intercede for us. We need Jesus Christ to bring peace between us and the Father. Because although we get saved and we accept Christ, we are still in our sinfulness. 
And we still need to confess our sins. That's why Jesus Christ is there interceding for us every minute of the day. Because, guess what? We all sin. And we all fall short of the glory of God. Each and every one of us. So he is our, our mediator. He is a mediator of the New Testament. And you can see that in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6. In chapter 9 and verse 15. In chapter 12 and verse 24. Keep that in mind. So you can read the scriptures later on. Point four. Is that. Jesus Christ has the right to be our mediator. Because of what he did on Calvary. Remember that. Jesus Christ. As a mediator. Now, remember, we're not looking at some human mediator in some contract negotiation or some referee. Jesus will never betray either party. Say it again. Jesus will never betray any party involved. He won't betray the Father, and he won't betray you. He will never betray you as a saint. He will never betray the Father. Never. He won't answer your prayer wrongly where it will affect you. He will not present it to the Father in a wrong manner where, where he will not accept it. Okay? He is the mediator and he gives 100% of pure mediation in everything that he does. For the Father and for us. Now, point five. Strifes and controversies come in three types. One, they arise merely from mistakes that are made by people. Okay? That's one. Two, such as a result of a wrong on both sides. And three, such as come from or come from wrong on one side only. So when somebody breaks a contract, the mediator says, you broke it, you have to do right. Okay? We have to understand that there are many times in one day where we break a contract. In relationship with our contract with God, guess what? We are always the blame. <laughs> God is never the blame. We, as humans, are always the blame. We're the ones that sin. We're the ones that don't fulfill are part of the agreement. Oh Lord, I'll follow you wherever you go. He says, okay. Sell what you have. Give to the poor. Well, forget that one. Lord, I will follow you. But first, let me go sell my cattle. <laughs> I bought property. Let me go take a look at it. I just got married. I got to spend time with my wife. My father died. I have to go take care of his burial. Excuses. We fall short. We make an agreement. We agree to do something for God, but we don't. What? I will fast for you every week. I will read your word every day. I will pray for an hour every day. Guess what? How far does that go? We miss one day. Actually, you know it's two or three days, right? And when you miss a day, guess what? You can't make up for that day. So it's best to write it down, get a plan, but don't make a vow or a contract with God that you cannot keep. 
Okay? Now, point six. And you ever forget this? Jesus is the only mediator of the new covenant. There is no one else. Only Jesus Christ is the mediator. There will never be anyone else. Why? Because he sacrificed himself for all people to freedom of their sins. He did. No one else. He did the work. He did what he was told to do by the Father. And now it is up to us to keep our part. Seven. The great end of Christ's mediation is the salvation of his people. The ultimate end of it is that we will be saved through Jesus Christ. Remember that when Jesus was born, we see in Matthew 121, Jack shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Period. His people. How do you become his person? How do you, do you become part of his people? By accepting him as your Savior and Lord. There is no other way. Nothing can change Christ's work or his mind. Let me give you an example. This is still part of. Uh, of number seven. As a mediator, he is no respecter of persons. He's no respecter of birth or blood. Riches, honors, color, nationality, or anything else. He's neutral. He doesn't look at your skin and say, what? You got different color skin, you can't come in. He doesn't say, well, are you a born in the United States? You come in. Uh, you were born in Cuba. You can't come in. He doesn't say anything like that. Well, I was born uh, up in the north. He didn't say you can't come in because you were born in the north. He doesn't say well, only those from the south can come in. Or the east and the west. He don't care what tribe you're from. He don't care any, about any of those. Whosoever will. Let him come drink of the water of life freely. And he has to go on anyone's advice. Oh, Lord, look at him. He's a sinner. Don't save him. I'm better than him. He's not going to listen to you. Well, Lord, I'm such a sinner. Don't accept me in the kingdom. He's not going to listen to that. Remember, remember who we're dealing with here. We're dealing with God. God doesn't make any mistakes. He doesn't play favorites. God does what is right. Remember, you can't look at God as a human being like us. <laughs> he isn't limited by time or space or anything else. He isn't limited by the weather. If you're in your home and a tornado's outside, he'll still come. Because there's a tornado, that doesn't mean that he's not going to come. If there's a flood, and you need a rowboat, he's going to be there. If you need a helicopter, he's going to be there. In a snow blizzard, he's going to be there. If you're, if you're sick and you're caught in a bad cough, you call on him, he's going to come in. He's not subject to your cold, or any germs, or any diseases. He will be there. Number eight, the necessity of a mediator is found in the holiness and justice of God, and in the fears, guilt, and miseries of man. God is so holy that he cannot look upon inequity. No man left to himself can be just with God. Keep that in mind, beloved. He is moved by his word and 
his compassion for his creation. You have to be right with God. You want something from God? You got to do right by God. You want eternal life in heaven? There's only one road to get there. That's through Jesus Christ. No two things are more contrary to each other than the vileness of man and the purity of God. You cannot be vile and think you're going to win God's favor. It won't happen. Your sinfulness will not get you anywhere. There's a price to pay, and you will pay the price. How do we know? How do we know this? Let's go back to the Old Testament, to King David. Right? Now, King David committed adultery with Bathsheba. King David was married. King David was supposed to be out with his troops, and he wasn't. Another point is that when Bathsheba became pregnant, David tried to get her husband Uriah to sleep with her so they'll think that they communed together and she got pregnant. But Uriah was faithful to Dave, King David and his men and slept out there with him. So what happened? David had him killed. And he thought he could hide it. Until Nathan the prophet came to him. And told him a little, gave him a little scenario. About a man that had sheep. And a man had a lot of sheep. And a man only had one sheep. And he said, David, what would you do? He said, I'd kill him. You know, he'd get the story of what he would do. And Nathan said, David, you are that person. And David thought that God was going to kill him. But God says, no, I forgive you. Because David repented immediately. But he said, the sword shall never depart from your house. There's a price to pay for sin, beloved. You need to confess your sin. You need to turn your life around. But if you commit adultery, something like, or you murder somebody, guess what? You have to answer for it. There is a price to pay for your sin. But you look at where you are spiritually. That's what makes the difference. Okay. We'll continue to go on. Point nine. To the office of mediator, Jesus Christ was chosen by his Father, God. First Peter chapter two and verse four says as first Peter chapter two verse four you are coming to Christ, the living stone who is rejected by humans, but was chosen as precious by God. Christ was rejected. Christ came to the Jews and they rejected him. Therefore the door was open, and we as Gentiles were grafted in to the kingdom of God. So that was 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4. Let me read that again. You are coming to Christ, the living stone, who was rejected by humans, but was chosen as precious by God. So, there has never been another chosen by God to perform the same work as Christ. Only one. Only one Messiah. Only one King of Kings. One Lord of Lords. One, Christ, one anointed one. That's Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He was no intruder to his office, and his father repeatedly declared himself well pleased in Christ and with his undertaking. God's, rising, uh, or God's raising him from the dead and exalting him at his own right hand was the highest possible proof that in Christ he was pleased. He's sitting at the right hand of God the Father. And you know what he's doing? He's making an intercession for us. He's our mediator. 
when we're praying something or we do something wrong, we repent. He turns right to the Father and says, Father, uh, you know, pastor did, uh, you know what he did down there, the guy we called as a pastor, you know, he, he, he did something wrong. He's asking me for forgiveness. Or uh, he says, you know, uh, Rick Esparza, yeah, well, you know, he did something wrong. He's asking, well, we can use all of our names, right, here. That's what he's saying. He just turns his head and he says to the Father, guess what? So-and-so asked me for forgiveness. Will you forgive him? His father says, yes, my son. I forgive him. Period. And lastly, point 10. It is a great thing to live under Christ's mediation. Through Christ, we have wonderful discoveries of the character and glory of God. Remember, Jesus said, I, I, I came to reveal the Father to you. See, through Christ, heavenly influences are sent down to draw us to God. All of our countless blessings as Christians are guaranteed to all who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for the salvation of their soul. Eternity itself will not exhaust the unsearchable riches of Christ that are guaranteed to all believers, which means they'll never end. They'll never end. Our blessings will never end. Nothing. Nothing can stop God from loving us. Nothing can stop us from going to Father. And when we leave this life, and we go to heaven, and we are with Christ, He will continually bless us meet our needs, and give us everything that we need. He will love us. He will be there for us. Remember, our salvation is an eternal thing. You can't work your way to heaven, give your way to heaven. You, you can't try to influence God to get to heaven. You must come the same way. The only way is through Jesus Christ. See, it's a sacred thing to live under the gospel. It's sacred. It's holy. No man can despise the mediation of Jesus Christ without incurring the greatest guilt of exposing himself to a greater danger, which is what? Eternal separation from God. There is nothing more sinful or dangerous than treading underfoot the Son of God, than cursing him, saying, he's not right, or you don't need Christ as a Savior. You can do it yourself. I don't believe in salvation. I don't believe in that God, Christ stuff. You are bringing condemnation on yourself. Remember, to treat the blood of Christ as an unholy thing is to reject and insult the spirit of the grace of God. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 20 and 29 says, in closing, anyone who violates the law of Moses dies without mercy. On the testimony of two or three witnesses, how much more severe a punishment do you think that person deserves who tramples on God's Son? Treats him as Treats as common the blood of the covenant by which it is sanctified and insults the spirit of grace. You know, Christ is our witness. He is our witness to the Father. He is our witness of the Father, of the love of the Father, of the mercy of the Father. When you see Christ, you see the image of God. Should we not be the image of Christ in this life? Should we not walk in obedience to God? Should we not evangelize the world for Christ? Should we not do a good work for Christ? Should we not go when God tells us to go? 
Should we not give 100%? Christ gives 100%. He gave 100% for us. That we may have life. That whoever accepts Him as their Savior, they will have eternal life. They will have the right to enter into the throne room of grace. You know, just think about it. The right that you have through Jesus Christ to go directly to God. You don't have to offer any sacrifices, bring any lambs or bulls or turtle doves or anything else. You can come freely. That is a blessing. How long do you think we would last in Old Testament times? If every time we said, every time we did something wrong, we went here from God, we had to make an offering. A burnt offering. We had to go in into We had to pay the priest. I mean, we had to give one third of our flocks. We had to do all these things. Now we come freely. Of course, we sustain the ministry. We pay our tithes and offerings. Sure. But there are some that want something from God but don't want to give God anything. They don't want to give Him part of the first fruits. They don't want to give Him their time. They just want to be on the receiving end. And this is what all this is all about. God sent His Son to be our mediator. Christ died on the cross for our sins. God gave His only begotten Son that whosoever shall believe in Him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We have to understand that God has a plan and a purpose for what He did. What are we going to do to carry on God's plan? What are we going to do we need to tell people about the mediator. We need to tell people that they can be forgiven of their sins. Mm -hmm. That there is someone that will intercede to the Father. We need to tell people about the blood of Jesus Christ. That it cleanses us from all of our sins. We need to tell people about the bishop and the shepherd of our souls. We need to let the whole world know who we are. That we are Saints of God. We are Christians. And we are to reveal who we are through our love for one another. Through our love for God. Through our love for the hurting. The hungry. The naked. The sick. We need to be a witness for Christ. Let them know that they can travel the same way that we travel. That Christ is there. All you have to do is enter into His grace. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Behold, I stand at the door, door and knock. And whosoever will open that door for me, for me, I will come in and sup with them. I will have fellowship with them. And then with me. We have fellowship with one another. Christ is inviting you today to come in. To come in to a relationship with Him. And Him with you. Are you willing to do that today? If you have never accepted Christ as your Savior and Lord, I want to invite you to do so today. Christ is the mediator between us, sinful man, and the holy God. If you want to come into a, per a proper relationship with him, I want to pray now, and I want you to pray with me. I want you to believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Will you do that today? Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I heard the message titled, Jesus Christ, the great mediator.
They only meet you. I was convicted in my heart today. I've never accepted your plan of salvation. I've never accepted Jesus Christ as my mediator, as my Savior and Lord. But I want to do it today. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for my sins on Calvary. Now only through Him can I have a relationship with God. Please forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins. And cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Save me today, Lord Jesus. Save me today. Cover me in your blood. Make me know. I want to be in heaven with you. I want to be a witness to the world. I want to be a witness to my family and my friends, and my co-workers. Use me as your vessel, as your instrument. And I know that I'm going to need you to do this. Give me the strength that I need. I promise at this point to follow you for the rest of my life. And I thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name I pray. If you said that prayer, let me be the first to welcome you into the kingdom. You have now received salvation. Now, what, what I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching teaching church. That's Bible preaching teaching church. And ask for an audience with a pastor. Ask him to anoint you with oil and to pray over you. Ask him to teach you, lead you, and guide you, and to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit through immersion. Now what I want you to do is contact me at abundant.grace at att.net. That's abundant.grace at att.net. And I'm Bishop Ramon de Maria. You can also contact me through our website at www. AbundantGraceChurch.net And you'll see a little link there that says Pastor Ramon. Please, I want to hear from you. Please continue to watch our videos on YouTube.com, Ustream.tv, and listen to our preaching and praises on PirateRadio.com. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. And remember, Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. God bless you, my beloved, and go with God.